Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be planting up four gorgeous varieties of plants, all of which are either blue or orange, which are complementary colors. They're opposites on the color wheel and they just look so good together. I mean, just check out how they look just bunched together in the back of the gator. They're so pretty. We've got an evergreen, a blue spruce, a caryopteris, a brand new rose coming out next year, and an echinacea. And I think it's a gorgeous mix if you go like this light apricot orange all the way to the more saturated darker orange with the blues. So starting with the blue spruce, this is one of the ones that Isley sent out. This is the Monty Blue variety. Grows eight by six, kind of keeping that nice tight form and that icy blue color. Hardy to negative 30, right? No, negative 40 degrees, dang, my goodness. But this variety is, uh, I guess, just unfazed by very harsh conditions, and I love the color. It's always easy to tuck in an evergreen, a blue one, that stays small like this. And then this, okay, this is like the crown jewel of this load right here. This is a Flavorette Honey Apricot Rose, like I said, coming out in 2024. This one is from uh, Proven Winners. And it has been bred to not only have these really beautiful kind of bowl shaped full blooms and fragrance, but they're also bred for taste as well. Roses are edible and I guess, and I'm not a rose petal connoisseur, but I guess they can be bred to be tastier than others. So, I mean, I guess we can try. Pretty mild, honestly, is how I would describe them. Not bitter or anything and there's no aftertaste, which is nice better than arugula <laughs> to me. But I think that the main reason people use rose petals is, you know, to do decorate desserts, cakes and things like that, bring in some natural decor with some nice color. Uh, and then also you can toss a little color in with your salads and things like that. It brightens things up. But this one is a zone four through eight and grows three to four feet tall and wide. We've got three of them to work with. I love it when we're able to try these things out and let you know how they do for us. Then we've got the Beyond Midnight Caryopteris, which has been in bloom for a little while. You can see a lot of the buds are still tightly formed. So those will gradually open up, uh, but you usually get mid summer color all the way through the rest of the year and they're just so beautiful they're an easy care plant they don't want a ton of moisture they want full sun they don't mind if it's crummy soil uh, they just want a spot that's well draining and i think that they are happy campers and then this echinacea right here i bought these when they had no color they're supposed to be playful meadow mama echinacea maybe we can toss a picture up on the screen of what they should look like if that's the right variety and these are not Playful Meadow Mama, not even close. So I'm not actually sure what variety we have here, but I wanna say that most, most varieties of Echinacea will grow like, I don't know, 20-ish inches tall, 15 to 18 inches wide. I mean, that is a very rough average. Some will stay smaller, some will get bigger. Uh, but I think that these, this color of orange looks really pretty with this Caryopteris. So that's probably where I will put, I'll put these together, like I'll place them together in the same location and then I love this soft peach with the blue evergreen and we recently had a little bit of a cool down it's warm today like mid 90s but boy like yesterday morning it was 56 degrees when I woke up which was awesome we got a bunch of rain the day before and rain the day before that and it looks like it's a warming back up close to 100 uh, kind of hovering there but we have a few days before that arrives so I'm just going to get these out make sure they stay watered and we should be good so these will mostly I think I'll, I'll go out in the south garden so let's head that direction we'll get them in and then I'll give you a tour and show you where they ended up. On the way, I do want to give you guys a update. We're going to stop at the area with the Supertunia Mini Vista Yellows and the Zinnias because the Zinnias have even more color than the last time I showed you. They're looking really pretty. Also, for those of you who want to see the pond, we'll stop real quick and take a look at that. The water is still on the orange side from the tannins from the logs sitting over there, which, you know, I've learned is actually good for the fish, good for the, uh, good for the, ecosystem here so we're just going to let it be we thought about popping that log up a bit so that it wasn't sitting directly in the water in fact you can see the water right down through the hole here yep see that so that's just leaching those tannins out into the water but i honestly don't mind it aaron just filled the pond almost to overflowing today <laughs> He came in and he was like, oh my gosh, it's right to the brim. But we did have a little bloom of string algae in here last week. And it was when we had really hot temperatures. And you know, this sun, or this pond rather, is in the full sun. There's no shade yet. We're working on that with everything we've planted around it. Um, so the heat and the full sun exposure, that's just gonna happen. But there's a thing in this pond called an ion gen. And I actually looked up the product details because I'm just learning about it myself. 
but what it does, it's a kind of inline in your pond's plumbing and it emits, when you turn it on, it works by releasing a calculated mixture of copper, silver, and zinc ions into the water, which goes to work against string algae. And I'm telling you what, within one to two days, that string algae was gone, like completely gone. And then you can just turn the ion gen off, which is awesome. It's safe for the fish. I mean, it's not something you keep on all the time, but um, yeah, it just takes care of the problem. And it's just maintaining that chemical free balance in here, which is great. There are dragonflies everywhere. Do you see them? There's like 15 of them. There's zero mosquitoes. We've been asked that quite often, but there's actually no sitting water, like no still water in here. Every area, even if it's slow moving, it's moving. So there's no stagnation and there's dragonflies to take care of any mosquito population that we might ever come up against, I guess. And I did hear from the rock yard where we ordered our pavers and we should be getting those in for this patio area and the pathways leading to and from the patio this week. They should be here in a couple of days. So that's exciting. Okay, we'll stop at the zinnia area and then we're gonna go plant. Look at this area, you guys. It's just so pretty. So we have the Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow just creating a, an absolute carpet right here. And then we have the Icicles Helichrysum kind of breaking it up a bit. We have the Lavender Stormburst Superbina and then all of the pink Senorita zinnias and one red. I swear somebody is messing with me. Everywhere I'm planting stuff, there's like one red flower that pops up. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is, but look at all that beautiful color. I'm so happy with it. And those zinnias will just bulk up even more and they'll fill in the space to where you won't, you won't see the soil by the end of the season. Kind of a fun late, mid to late season project actually. Okay, oh, we have a little patch of overcast. That's nice. Let's go find some spots for these plants. You know what? That blue spruce would look really pretty right in here, don't you think? Let's try it. Got everything in and they look so great. Starting with that little blue spruce. Isn't that perfect? So growing eight by six, eight feet tall, six feet wide, it's just kind of the perfect little accent evergreen. It does look really beautiful from this side. It's kind of framed in and I'll walk over there in a second. And then I put the Flavorette Honey Apricot Roses right here. Now I do have quite a number of other roses in this area. We've got the Lickfield Angel or Litchfield. I don't know, it's white rose, kind of a creamy white really pretty. And then we also have the reminiscent pink rose right here, which is just a very pale pink. Just planted these this year. So I think it'll look so beautiful and soft to have all those very light kind of pastel colors in this area. And I did bump the middle one back and they are evenly spaced. I know it always looks weird from whatever angle you're standing at, um, but I bumped that middle one back a little bit so that we could do a drift of something wonderful right in front just to kind of hug that 
the edge of the flagstones there. But that apricot and blue is just a beautiful combination. Let's see if we can get through the flower bed here. We've got some gorgeous stuff going on in these flower beds right now. This is the Apache Rose Panicum right here, and then there's a Lobelia, something Starship, I think. The uh, Price is White Echinacea, which some of them have that, what's it called? What's it called when they do that weird thing on the top? Gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, I think I need to remove those, but most of them are good. It just, just looks like two of them need to be removed. And then we've got the Cat's Meow Nepeta, still looking gorgeous. From the front side here though, you can see that blue spruce. And once it grows up and fills in that little space, it's just gonna look like the perfect little, it's just the perfect shape for that area. The others ended up on the other side. And you know, I kind of love the whole willy nilly approach that we've taken to this space. Just kind of planting whatever we feel like at the moment, whatever, wherever a plant looks like it fits, that's where we put it. That's been a really fun approach instead of having an overall design. And, you know, eventually, like with the walkways and stuff, that kind of helps form formulate your design or kind of hone it in the end. But after we had those berms put in around the pond, I'm almost thinking that right here, because we haven't developed the edge of this flower bed, let me go a little further. I've really focused on the grass side of that flower bed, so I've left this fairly untouched. We could come in. There's plenty of room to do some berm work if we want, which would give this part of the South Garden a little bit of a uh, more secret feel. And it will be secret in the end, even if we don't do the berms because it's gonna be so heavily planted. But either way, I don't know, it's kind of a fun thing to think about. So right here, you know, we've got a big open space. Didn't really focus a lot on that. We've put in a bonnie blue, blue spruce back there, right in here by the lemon squeeze penstemon, which are looking phenomenal. Highly recommend this ornamental grass. I popped one of the Beyond Midnight Caryopteris right there, and then in front of it put whatever variety of echinacea this happens to be, but I think it's a gorgeous combination. The blue with the orange, and then that yellow with the texture of the seed heads, just beautiful. And then the second Caryopteris I put over here. So kind of continuing on with some more perennial planting in this space. Uh, so again, these only get two, did I already say that they get two to two and a half feet tall and wide? So that's like topped out at its mature height. It'll bulk up, uh, but it's right next to some autumn joy sedum. All of this and the geraniums in front came from the back garden before we tore it apart. The one with the big boxwood ring in it. I went through and I moved as much stuff as I could as I had time for. The irises right next to him also came from back there. Uh, and I'm really pleased with how they're doing. They really look like they're enjoying their life out here. So those irises came from there um, and we've got some pufferfish hydrangeas growing back behind them. And this is an Agastache, I think it's Blue Fortune. I could be mistaken on that, but it's a pollinator haven. Do you see all the honeybees? I can hear them just standing here. The layers are coming together really nicely out here. And you know, sometimes I had some variegated lavender. I, you can see I have one left. I had some that I moved back here out of containers and I had maybe four or five and only one survived, but I kind of love just having the one right here. It's really pretty. And you guys, that is it for today. Just a little bit of this and that, some planting, some updates, a beautiful day to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.